Okay, so the question becomes, what happens when we put a negative sign in front of the x? And the last problem, I believe we did a negative sign in front of the entire function. And we find across the x-axis. What happens when we put a negative sign in front of just the x? So here it's the same uh, original um, common graph. And this time the negative sign is with the x, not in front of the entire function, which would be in front of there. So what happened to do that? It reflects across the y-axis. So let's go ahead and draw our common graph, which we had in the last example. Here's a common graph. f of x equals the square root of x. And then when we have a negative sign in front of the x, we reflect across the y-axis. So it'll be here's the y-axis right here. It's going to go ahead and have the point, this will go right here. This will be right here. And then that point will start around the y-axis. This will be your h of x. Okay. So the next problem I want you to do um, a vertical stretch. And we're going to go ahead and look at vertical stretching and Shrinking graph. This is a little bit more complicated. So if I were you and I tell my students, you're gonna see a lot more of this when you take if you take a trigonometry class. So I'm gonna do them kind of briefly go over this, but I'm gonna ask y'all when you get your note card or if you have a note card that you can use for the exam that you write down these rules because they're just really easy to memorize um, or easy to have the rules in front of you. Okay. So what happens when you have a value, a constant or a number in front of your entire Function. So here I have a number in front of my function, and we call it c. If that number is more than 1, we're going to stretch by multiplying each y-coordinate by c. If it's between 0 and 1, we're going to shrink it, but we're still multiplying all the y-coordinates by c. So if you have a value in front of c, or a value in front of the function, a value in front of the function, and we go ahead and say... Let's make this y equals. We have a value in front of here. All you're going to do is just multiply the y coordinate by the c value. It doesn't matter if it's big or small, because all we're doing is we're going to, we're going to see the stre stretching or our shrinking um, as we draw our point. Okay, so here I have um, f of x equals x to the third power, and notice how I'm putting a value in front of that function, that one half is in front of the entire thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our um, common graph. So here is x to the third, like that there, and then two to the third, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, there's a one, two little. Okay, and then negative one, negative one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there's our common graph right there. Oops. Okay, this is f of x. Now, if we see an, again, if we see a number in front of the function, we're going to multiply all the y coordinates. So we're going to multiply. all y coordinates by one half. Okay. So here this y coordinate is eight. So half of eight would be four. So one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna move down there. So x coordinate stays the same. So here I have y coordinate of one, half of that would be a half. It'd be right there. This y coordinate is zero and half of that would be zero, so that stays there. This y coordinate is negative one, so half that would be a negative a half. Y coordinate is negative eight, so it'll be one, two, three, four, it'll be negative four. Okay, this will be your h of x function. So notice how it shrunk the graph. This 
point shrunk down way down there and so on, the x values were still the same. Okay. What happens when you have a value, a number in front of just the x coordinate or x value in your function? Okay. And basically what you're gonna do is if you have that to be true, so if I have y equals f c of x, that basically means that you have a value in front of your um, x coordinate or x value in your function, you're going to divide each x coordinate by by that constant. Okay, so let's look at example seven. Here is your function, and they're saying this is g, this is um, f of x. Now g of x, I'm going to put two in front of the x value. The two for the x value. So I'm going to take all these x coordinates and divide by two. So this x coordinate is negative four. I'm going to divide by two and give me negative two. Right there. This x coordinate is negative two divided by two would be negative one. The y coordinate stays the same. Um, this x coordinate is 0, divided by 2 is still 0, so it stays there. This x coordinate is 2, divided by 2 is 1, so it can be right there. And this x coordinate is 4, divided by 2 would be 2, right there. So we're going to kind of mimic the shape of that original function. We're going to have a little curve up there, come down here, we have a point here and here. So I took every x coordinate and divided it by 2. Now here's this f function here, and now I'm putting a half in front of there, so I'm dividing everything by half. Be really careful with that. So here I have all the, I'm dividing all the x coordinates by half. This x coordinate here is negative 4. So negative 4 divided by a half. So negative 4 divided by a half. And there's a couple ways to do the problem. I'm just using my calculator. Or you can remember to multiply by 2 over 1. But I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator. So negative 4 divided by 1 half, 1 ABC2, or 0.5 gives me negative 8. So this x coordinate now becomes negative 8. And the y value is 0 stays the same. Negative 2 divided by a half. So negative 2 divided by a half. Is negative 4. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So negative 4, 4. This will stay the same because this x coordinate is 0 divided by half is still 0. This one is x coordinate of 2, so 2 divided by half would be 4. So I have x coordinate of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. And this one is 4 divided by half would be 8. Stays right there. Okay. So again, we're mimicking the shape here. Have a curve up here. I'm gonna have a V shape here. Okay. The key for these shrinking. Again, we're not gonna see very much of this in this class. But I want to show you how it works. I should take a trick. If you have a number, go back to page um, eighty-six. If you have a number in front of the entire function. The rule is you're just going to multiply all the y-coordinates by that number. If you have a number in front of just the x value, you're going to divide each x-coordinate by that value. And so do those there. Okay. So here is a summary of all those transformations. If you add a number to the end, it goes up or down. If you add a number to just the x, you're going to do left or right movement. If you have a negative sign in front of your entire function, you're going to reflect across the x-axis. 
You have a negative sign with the x. You're going to deflect across the y-axis. If you have a value of a value in front of your entire function, which I have right here, you're going to multiply each y-coordinate. that constant. If you have a number in front of your x, you're going to divide each x coordinate by the constant. Okay, so let's look at what happens when we have all these transformations or some of these transformations um, in a problem. So we want to make sure we follow a certain order, kind of like the order of operations. So if you have transformations, you want to always do your horizontal movement first. The left or right. So you're going to look at that um, left or right movement. Then you're going to look at stretching or shrinking. I'm not stretching wrong. The S T R E. T C H then you do your reflection and then your vertical shift. Vertical is the upper down movement. The easiest one that a lot of students remember is the upper down movement. You do that last. So far, we've only done more than one transformation. We have a horizontal and a vertical shift. That was example three. Now let's look at when we do some more transformations. Okay, this is the big problem. So given the graph, we use a graph of f of x, y equals f of x, which is right here in this figure, to graph y equals negative one half f quantity x minus one plus three. So there's a lot going on here. So here's my original function and a lot going on here. So let's look at what we have. And the first thing I look at is I look for, in the step one, horizontal shift, left or right movement. So you look at where x is and you see you have plus or minus next to it. Are you adding something to it or are you subtracting something from it? In this case, the first thing I look at and in red, I see I'm going to go to the right one. Because if I'm minusing 1, I'm going to the right 1. The second thing you want to do is look at for any um, shrinking, stretching, or shrinking. So we look for a number in front of the function or in front of the x. And in front of the function, I have that 1 half. So we're going to take 1 half of all the y coordinates. That's, that's 1 half right there. Third thing I look for is any reflection. Do I see a negative sign anywhere? I see a negative sign right here. It's in front of the entire function. It's not with the x. It's in front of the entire function. So I'm going to reflect that on the x-axis. And that's the in green. And I'm doing color coordination. So every arrow I have here matches with the step here. And the last thing, is probably the easy thing left in to see is do I have a number add on or subtract at the end? And that's right there. So I'm going to move up or shift up three units. Okay. So I'm getting ready to run out of time here. And so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and it'll start right from here in the next part.